Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope everything is fantastic. It's uh, it's gonna thunderstorm here today, a lot. Like we have severe warnings. It's been thunderstorming here a lot lately and we've had some pretty serious flash flooding that's caused a lot of damage to businesses and homes in the area. So I'm recording this early. It's actually lunchtime right now. Just wanna make sure I get it in case I lose power or something like that because I don't miss episodes dag and nabbit and uh it's also game night tonight at the library so i wanted to be able to make sure this was in the can so to speak what if i did this show on film and then like digitized it every day that's not gonna happen uh anyway uh, i wanted to make sure it was good to go so it's a little early in the day for me to have my thoughts made up about you know topics so let's just talk about game night um, I still haven't play tested the utilities board game with other people, and I plan on taking it to the library tonight. But um, I feel awkward in those situations asking people to play test my game, especially since we haven't had library game night in like a year and a half. Not quite, but a year and 50, say 16, no. Yeah, 16 months. 17 months, something like that. So last week was our first, like, adventure back to game night, and then tonight will be, you know, the second ever game night of, in the last, whatever, not ever, but anyway, the point is, I have a hard time going to that event and saying, does anybody want to playtest my shitty game, right? Because, let's be honest, I, no, let's, let's act, let's actually be honest, it's not a shitty game. Uh, I, I say, I say a lot of self-deprecating things as defense mechanisms, and I probably need to learn how to get over that, because I don't necessarily need defense mechanisms all the time. Is it a shitty game? No. Is it a good game? No. It's somewhere in between. Uh, hopefully right now it's playable. I'm not even convinced it's playable. It's playable by me. I've solo tested it, and I know that the mechanics that I enjoy are in it. The difference is when I put it in front of other people, it might completely fall apart. I might find out that a strategy I haven't thought of is just dominant or it completely breaks the game. Uh, and I might find out that the mechanics that I find interesting are really confusing to players and they don't partake in those mechanics because I added... Uh, so for, for you that don't know, the, the game is kind of a two-part game. There's a game board where you're putting pieces like Ticket to Ride, you're building routes, and then there's also this additional, like, unlockable bonus type stuff. And those things relate to what's going on on the board. You know, if you, if you want to get more victory points or you want to uh, expand your abilities on the board, you can unlock special powers, you can unlock scoring mechanics that aren't, you know, if you don't pay to unlock those, you don't benefit from those at the end of the game. So it's kind of like a little side thing going on. And that might not work. It just simply might not be interesting. And people might completely ignore that in favor of just doing the board stuff. Because doing the board stuff scores you points too. And it might, I might find out that doing the board stuff, stuff scores you enough points that you don't need to worry about the extra stuff. Or that doing the extra stuff and completely ignoring the board is the way to play. I don't know. And so, uh, but the whole point of this conversation is... I have a really difficult time asking people to play my games. When I used to go to Protospiel, uh, I, I traveled quite a bit. I went to designer meetups uh, in Washington, D.C. with friends at a, at a friend's place. We, a bunch of us stayed there one weekend and played games. I went to designer meetups in Madison, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Designer meetups at Gen Con uh, Origins. And invariably... I just played other people's games and very rarely brought my prototypes out. The only time I brought my prototypes out was if somebody asked. I had a really hard time asking people to play my games. I always have. And I think part of it is lack of confidence on my part. I've, again, I mean, I just threw out some self-deprecating, quote, humor earlier just as a defense mechanism for myself. Uh, I, I, I tend to do that a lot in every aspect of my life. 
and I have a very hard time asking for anything in every aspect of my life. I find, you know, in M and I's relationship in this house, when my kids are here, I don't ask for things. Very, very rarely do I ever ask somebody to do something for me. I just do all the things. And when people ask me, I jump to do it because I've always been much more comfortable as a, in, in a kind of a, I guess, a servant role, or I've always been more excited to help others than to help myself. And I need to kind of learn to get over that, especially when it comes to working on a project like a game, because I can't, while I could design a game in a vacuum by myself and say, here's my game and, and you should play it, um, chances are what comes out of that is not, is not playable by other people's standards. Uh, I always find these weird little quirks that I enjoy that aren't enjoyable to others. I had this game called Black Bear Downs. I loved it. I thought it was great. It was a racing game at heart where, you know, pieces moving around a track. Uh, but the actual game, the, the, the part that was interesting was hand management. And I had this whole hand management. I don't remember how it worked. But I really loved the hand management aspect of that game. And that completely fell flat. Zero other people found that interesting. Uh, and I thought it was great. I really enjoyed that design. Maybe I should bring it out again someday because uh, I think that if I could figure out a way to make the hand management part work, the racing part was the racing part was solid. It was just a you know oval track with spaces and you move the pieces, but the, the part of that that part worked really solid. Uh, but anyway, the point is, I, I, I think I just simply don't ask. That is in and of itself a defense mechanism. Because if I go to game night and I take my game and I sit there and nobody asks to play it, then I haven't failed, but I also haven't won, right? I also haven't advanced the design at all. Whereas if I go there and I pull the game out and I ask people to play and they sit down to play and the game falls apart and nobody's enjoying themselves, I've just wasted a bunch of people's time when they could have played something they could have enjoyed playing and it makes me feel worse. And so I have to figure out the way out of that mental trap. And if you have any tips or tricks to get out of that mental trap, let me know. Because I read self-help books. I read a whole lot of, of, of cognitive behavioral therapy type things to try to help myself escape those thoughts. And, and it's very difficult. Let me know in the comments. I'm going to stop this before the rain. So thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should notice sounds smart is germane. It is an adjective meaning relevant, pertinent, and fitting. Quotes from Mal Castro and Che Guevara are as germane to highly technological computerized society as stagecoach on a jet runway at Kennedy Airport. Saul Alinsky, an American activist. Germain, G-E-R-M-A-N-E. -E. Uh, coincidentally, Germain was the name of my middle school bully, uh, who turned out to be a pretty okay guy. I met him like 20 years later, and he talked to me, and, and we had a lot in common, and, and it was interesting.